rebuilding. A catastrophic failure, a new start. Physically, mentally, our careers, our businesses. Step back, first step, next step. The driver in me just wants to get it done tomorrow. We'll do this, do that, let's move this, where are we at with this? You build some confidence, build some self-esteem, start to feel better about yourself. The Silverback Blueprint Podcast, a show for men over 40. We focus on getting stronger, staying motivated, building discipline, creating a community, and becoming truly happy. Hey guys, and welcome back to the 70th episode of the Silverback Blueprint Podcast, 7-0, Life After 600. I'm also videotaping this one today, so I'll be like turning from the microphone to the phone to the, it's just crazy what I'm going to be able to do with this thing. So this one's coming out, I think March 1st. So by March 1st, I will have pretty much finished my competitive season for 2017, 2018. As I was saying earlier, I um, like to do this between October, November, start up the heavy lifting, compete through December, through March uh, last year. Twenty, I went to April last year, 2017, and then take a break, focus on the bodybuilding, focus on the outdoor walking, uh, let the body heal up mentally, physically. And um, so uh, my goal this year, and uh, hopefully by the time this podcast drops, I will have uh, hit it is I finished last season with a 550, just missed a 565 on my third attempt, April 1st. So my goal going into this competitive season is to get 575 and that elusive 600. And the reason why I'm calling this episode Life After 600 is I've been thinking about what will training look like for me um, and I don't, I don't want to say if I hit 600, you want to be like, I'm going to hit 600 motherfuckers. Um, what, what training and life will look like for me after that? Because those of you that may or may not know 600 pounds on the bench press, uh, raw, meaning just in the t-shirt has been a goal of mine for shit. I'm going to say 25 years. Um, so, you know, you chase something for that long and you go after for that long and, you know, um, I'm turning 50 March 18th, 2018. Uh, so uh, self-imposed pressure, you know, the last three years getting back into benches. Funny, you know how Facebook puts those those memories up there, you know, uh, three years ago. Well, three years ago, yesterday, a video came up of me competing in a CPF uh, powerlifting meet in Montreal where I got 474 on my second attempt. And I just missed 503 on my third attempt. And it was funny because almost three years to the day, um, I'm writing the the podcast I'm filming today. I'm actually physically in in normal space and time continuum. I'm uh, competing this weekend, uh, my first meet of 2017, December 16th, where I will be going for 575. And training's been going really well. Based on those numbers, I'm very confident I'm going to open up with a 545 and then second attempt 575. And um, after I hit that, I, w- I want to give 600 a run. I want to see what 600 feels like. Um, you know, I've been competing for a long time, but I still get a little nervous. The 600 obviously has a big, big thing for me and stuff. And I remember saying a few episodes back, we were talking about, you know, I had it in my head that I was going to hit 600. And I was chasing that 505, that 510, that 505, 510, 520. And this is like just a year ago. And I said, you know, rather than have this far off goal of 600 pounds, I want to break it down to next meet, 525. And then the next meet after that, 540. And then the next meet after that, 550. So rather than have that 100 pound gap, break it down into some smaller manageable 20 to 25 pound jumps. And when I made that switch about, I guess about a year and a half ago, when I made that switch, it started to happen because it was attainable and it was a number I could work with. And it was a number that was maybe 15 pounds heavier than the number I just did. So when I started doing that and I started putting that effort and that pressure on myself saying, Hey, listen, you can get the smaller goal, but you got to work every Tuesday, every Saturday, and you got to press hard and you got to focus. 
when I did that, those numbers started falling. So April 1st, 550 was a huge milestone for me, mentally, physically. And it was crazy because that was my second attempt. And then for shits and giggles, I said, hey, let's put 565 on for my third attempt. And I almost got it. I drove right up to just about locking point. My elbows flared a bit. And I'm like, you know, take it. My foot started to slip and I was worried my foot was going to slip off the floor. And it was funny because I knew mentally that once I broke that 550, the next jump or two would go pretty quick because that 550 had been eluding me for a good year and a half. And uh, as evidenced by almost getting that 565. So that's why I took 575 as my next goal. But also knowing that as I took 575 for my next goal, the next one was 600. A couple weeks ago in training, I gave 585 a run. And uh, it went kind of good. Jumped off the chest, wobbled a bit in the shoulders, and then I locked it out. And I just wanted to test that heavier weight. And 585 is 645 pound plates aside. And that's a bit of a mind fuck. It doesn't matter how strong you get. Every time you add that full 45 pound plate, that wheel, it messes with your head, right? I knew guys that couldn't bench 315, which is three plates aside, but they could bench 315. If we put two plates a quarter and two tens on, they could bench it, like for one to two reps. We put that third plate on instead, and they just fucking stall. And there's just that intimidation factor of adding that extra 45 pound plate. Um, so part of me wanted to get that, you know, just feel that two or three weeks ago uh, to get that out of my head because you can't bench 600 without going past six plates, right? Um, but I've really been thinking is what's it going to be like having benched 600 pounds, having had that so long for a goal in my mind for so long, and now that I'm so close to doing it, I'm going to do it. I wonder, is it going to be anticlimactic on the other side, you know? Um, am I going to be like, fuck it, let's go 625, let's go 650, the road to 700 just opened up. I don't feel it's an age thing. I really don't. I think it's a commitment uh, and consistency thing. But there's also a factor too that I'm wondering that if I get on the other side of 600, maybe part of me is going to feel like, hey, I did it. And, you know, will the passion change a little bit? I don't know, right? So that's what, you know, I've been thinking a lot last, last week or so about that is like, what's life after 600 going to look at? You know, now I'll tell you this, if I don't get the 600, well, that's what we're going to fucking focus on. So one way or the other, I'm not leaving this planet until I hit 600 pounds on the bench. I'd like to do it before 50. I'd like to do it within this meet or next meet. You know, I'd like to do it within this competitive season. Um, I'm fairly confident I can. Um, but I'm also confident if I don't get it, I'll get it in the competitive season starting 2018 into 2019. So I'm not worried about that. I have more confidence in that than I do in what's it going to look like on the other side of 600. Will there be a part of me that just says, okay, let's pick a different goal. Let's body build. Let's do something different, right? Um, or let's just maintain it. Or, you know, 625, 650, here I come. And then I'll, you know, maybe look at that and say, if I can do 600, then start to look at 700, Right. So it's, I guess it's, it's all about the limitations and what we're going to do with it, you know, what that journey is going to be like. But, um, yeah, it's just, it was, uh, it's something I've really been thinking about. And I decided today I was going to do the podcast about it, is that, you know, what's it like when you have a goal and you hit that goal and it's been a goal for so long. So for me, it's the bench 600 is one of my lifetime goals. I've got some other ones, obviously in business and in life and stuff like that, but you know, talk to guys that, you know, what's it like, you know, you, you won the Stanley cup. Do you want to win it again? Um, there's a factor in how old you are at the time. Like, you know, uh, it, it, you know, was it, and I don't know these numbers really well and stuff like that, but I think the year Ray Bork retired, he won the Stanley cup. Wasn't something like that with Colorado and stuff like that. And what I, uh, there was something that maybe he got traded and that was just cause he wanted to finish career with the Stanley cup. I could be all fucking wrong, but I know that happened with a hockey player. Um, you know, was that enough for him? If that if that's the guy and that's what happened, was that enough for him? Hey, I got that Stanley Cup. You know, I got the 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 ultimate prize in that sport and stuff. You know, on the other side, is he like, whew, I'm glad I got that and I'm retiring now and on to other things? Um, or will he be, oh man, I got it and I wish I was 10 years younger so I could get it three more times? I don't know. I wonder how that goes. I wonder what that's like leaving a sport after attaining a certain thing or, or moving on in life, once you've hit a certain goal, you know, once you climb Mount Everest, I mean, what's, what's left, right? 
I'm not saying benching 600 is like Mount Everest, um, but you know, it, it's just it is for me because it's been that kind of goal. So I wonder, I wonder what that's going to be like, and I wonder, um, you know, what people will expect from me after that too, right? Because for as long as people have known me in the in the gym business, you know, one of the things I'm known for um, is the big bench guy. No, I'm not the heaviest bencher in the world. There's guys that are benching 600, 650, 700. I think the, the record is 722 or something like that. Uh, raw. It's over 1,000 with a bench shirt and stuff. Um, you know, I, part of me would like to say, yeah, I'd like to do 700. But I don't know if I'll be as uh, if I'll be as hungry for 700 as I have been for 600. And I don't even know what put 600 in my head. Like 25 years ago, no one was benching it. Maybe that's why. You know, there was very few guys that were benching close to that or were benching that 25 years ago when I decided I was going to take my shittiest lift and make it my best lift and, and put all that time, energy, and, and, and acquire all that knowledge and, and skill with it. So it's just, uh, I don't know, man. It's kind of weird. It's kind of surreal. It's like, hey, man, what are you going to do after that? I don't know. You know, um, luckily... I have other goals. So maybe if that one, you know, the, you know, I retire that goal, I have other passions to follow. Uh, maybe that's important. Maybe that's what's important in life too, is to have multiple planes of, of, um, of goals or, you know, have different aspects of your life that you're working on so that you're not a one trick pony. You know, if I didn't have some of the other things going on and that's all I had and that was everything that made me happy and that's gone, what happens then? I'm sure that'd be a lot harder to deal with, you know, and I, I'm sure we see that, right? We see that people have hit the pinnacle of whatever they're in, whether it's music or sports or business and they've lost motivation after that or they go sideways with it or they lose it all and they have nothing else going on, nothing else that makes them happy, no other endeavor, you know, no horse ranch in Montana to go retire to and stuff like that. So I'm wondering, you know, is that part of the, that downward slide that happens to people that get to a certain height of something and then something happens and then they have nothing else, no other, no, no other depth in their life to work on. So it'd be interesting. I mean, it's much like when we hear about guys who retire and there's two guys who retire. There's guys who retire and they're busier now retired than they were before because they, they get, they're doing the things now that they've always wanted to do. They didn't have time for before. And then we hear about the guys who retire and one to two years later, they're dead because that job or that career was their whole existence. It's what they got up for in the morning. It's what made them go to bed at night, right? They had that to focus on. So I think that's pretty interesting to look at and to think about. And, you know, we hear stories of, uh, you know, business guys that, you know, did that everything was at the expense of the business. And next thing you know, they're 75 years old, they sold their business, but they have no family left. Their family left them because they were never there for them, or they never had a family or whatever. So all of a sudden, they're sitting there, and they're alone. They have nothing else to go to, right? We see that. So I don't think that's the way we want to end up. I think the other thing, too, is you definitely don't want to be that guy that ends up with a ton of regrets for having done nothing and worked hard, right? So at the end of the day... Part of the battle is the hard work. And I think that's, you know, if I look back at the bench press and how it was when I started and where I'm at now with my business and brand, dude, all that happened because of the bench, right? And where this brand takes me and this business takes me, you know, over the next, you know, 15 to 25 years, I plan on living forever and working for at least 25 more. Um, wherever that goes, it's all because that love-hate relationship that I started with the bench press. Right. So it's pretty powerful when you look at it that way. So having something to be passionate about and to be driven about, I think one of the most important things about it is what it exposes us to along the way. It's far bigger than just the bench. It's far bigger than the gym. It's far bigger than going to a competition. Right. It's how many people have I talked to in the last 25 years because of the bench press or I've met or in a gym because I was training the bench press, or do you know what I mean? Like that, that, that continuum, so many things happens along it, have, have, have happened and will happen because of that goal to do something at a high level. So I, I think that is, is super powerful. And I think at the end of the day, if I never get beyond 600 pounds, 
I think everything that that's bought and brought me because of that 600 pound quest is crazy. Do you know what I mean? And that to me is something I wish on everybody. And that's why I like powerlifting because you know what? You can start powerlifting at 49 years old and be stronger next year, right? You can start powerlifting at 62 years old and be stronger next year, right? There's very few things in the world you can do that with, right? And I, that's why I just love it as a sport. I love it as a business and I love it for the brand because that's to me what it represents for hostile. And I think a hostile gear is that whole, it's not over until it's really over. And it's you against you, but you're in a community of people celebrating the fact that you're going after that goal. Do you know what I mean? And to be able to continue to improve as we get older, and as we get older, we appreciate it more because of, you know, we we are older and we've lived through things and we have life experience and realize that the stuff that's valuable to us now, if we'd have known when we were 20, like really know, not be like, yeah, yeah, old man, I know you're fucking telling me this is what it's going to be like and when you're older, but truly know that in our heart, what it's like, the valuable, the value of the experiences, um, who knows where that could have taken us, right? So that's why for me, it's so fundamentally important that as we get older, we continue to improve so we can take the benefit of all the experience we have and the knowledge we've acquired and the maturity and to get to live more years in that and seeing the world through those eyes is super important. Who thought benching 600 pounds would lead to such philosophical matters? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's really cool. It's really cool to see. And it doesn't matter if it's golf, if it's curling, if it's whatever you're into, right? Be passionate about something strive to become the best you can at it for yourself and all kinds of shit's going to happen along the way and a lot of great stuff's going to happen along the way and to me that's crazy exciting to me i'm blessed to have had the goal of benching 600 pounds and as always guys it only works if you work hard motherfuckers head on over to itunes leave me a five-star review um, head on over to hostilegear.com. Use the code word, secret code word that everybody knows about because they listen to the show, Silverback, to get 20% off a killer hoodie. This is one of the retro OG hoodies. I'm, I'm on the video for those of you guys listening to the podcast. I got the video going. So I got the black hoodie with the OG white skull on it. I think we're going to reintroduce that one again. It's uh, Every time I wear it, people are like, oh, I want that hoodie. Uh, it was one of the first hoodies we did like five, seven years ago and stuff. So I think it's time to bring that bad boy back. And uh, if you head on over to hostilegear.com and use the code SILVERBACK, you get to save 20% off a kick-ass hoodie. Guys, that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. That was weird. I feel like, no, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up. Fuck off. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. (laughs)